Why'd you move to LA? Oh, for the kids, the family, the weather. P. Diddy or Diddy, whichever name he's called. To spy on Kim. One of the wealthiest rappers with an estimated nine-figure net worth. And music is far from his only source of revenue. With that kind of bank, the man has lived in mansions all over the U.S. from New Jersey to New York City and everywhere in between. However, in these days, Diddy's main estate is in the of mansions all over the U.S. from New Jersey to New York City and everywhere in between. However, in these days, Diddy's main estate is in none other than Beverly Hills, and we're going to take a look at his homes. We even found some morning, y'all. Sean Combs, a.k.a. P. Diddy, Diddy Puff Daddy, is a rapper, songwriter, singer, record producer, entrepreneur, actor, and more, who found his own label and a sodomite back in the 90s. and an abuser of, of women and a, a betrayer to African Americans. P. Diddy's debut album has been certified seven times platinum, and he has since followed up with a handful of other successful albums, winning three Grammy Awards and other accolades along the way. Music is certainly not the only way that Diddy has earned his nine-figure fortune either. As you probably know, he's worked on plenty of business. Cheated on her. Clothing line, Sean John, his probably own beat on her too. And much more. Of course, he's also behind developing the y'all. vodka brand, half of it anyways, and he has a major stake in a TV network. These days, P. Diddy is enjoying life as one of the richest rappers. It's a lot of there power. so much more than that. Whatever way you spin it, as of this year, his estimated net worth is at a whopping $885 million. A whole hey guys, lot of money. Hey guys, we're doing another house tour here on Famous Entertainment. I got some requests for this one, so it's about time we did hits. We'll be taking a look at where Sean Combs, a.k.a. P. Diddy, calls home, like his mega estate in Beverly Hills. As let's, look, let's look at, um, let, let, let's look at what, uh, what he bought with all the tears. All of the fucking rape, sodomy. Let's look at what um being a minion for Satan gets you here on Earth anyway. Bought this large apartment in Manhattan back in 2005 for 3.83 million, and finally sold it in spring 2017. Thanks to Biggie, that Biggie catalog, especially the Ready to Die album. Diddy's Man. previous apartment was located for that. in the Swanky Park Imperial Building in Midtown Manhattan, and it was sold for an all-cash deal. Originally configured with three beds and 3.5 baths, the new floor plans that came with the online listing materials show the apartment having two beds and two baths now. In total, the high floor unit spans 23... This is what Satan gives you when you're a faithful minion. Walking in, Diddy's previous place, you're greeted by a bedroom-sized entryway and completely closed off eating kitchen with black granite flooring and... Who knows how many young people were abused in that very in that very place. I'd almost be willing to bet that a few of them um, making the band kids had some horror, horrifying experiences in this apartment right here off Central Park. How did he occupy the space? He took advantage of the views before that happened. One of the original bedrooms here was converted into an office slash den with a walk-in wet bar installed in what used to be a bathroom. The master suite here, which of course used to be where Diddy slept, is privately situated in its own wing of the apartment. And has a large bedroom and views. But when y'all going to talk about the big house? Two of which are walk-ins. And a luxury bathroom with heated floors. When y'all going to talk about the big... Oh, here we go. Here the big house. Play-based luxury developer Niles Niami was the previous owner of the estate. Buying it back in 2012 for just under $14 million. As expected, Mr. Niami gave the whole property a complete overhaul. Getting rid of the 13,000 square foot 1930s mansion. This is, this is what the devil gives you when you, when you loyal to him. Move in ready and it's still where he calls home to this day. Located in the exclusive Los Angeles neighborhood of Holmby Hills, neighboring homes include the likes of the legendary Playboy Mansion and Kylie Jenner's brand. A lot of girls um, was raped in the Playboy style? Mansion. My style is Diddy style right here. You know? Yeah, honeycomb. He Cause you smack so sweet, yo. Palatial mansion. It's seventeen thousand square feet with eight beds and eleven baths. The two-story custom home didn't even have a chance to be listed for long once construction was finished. As a rapper snapped it up in an off-market A lot Although happened. Although there were no listing photos of the interior that I could find, Diddy opened up his doors to the large property a few years back when he answered questions for Vogue. We can see he has a large open entry with spiral staircase and sparkling shade. Don't he look so and happy? Can you look at the open plan living area where there are two large All of them people he messed over. Tree set up at the time of the interview. The decor here is very clean with lots of And his number one bottom bitch, Mary There's J. Blige, using her as a peculiar. 
secure in a menu. Opening up to the patios outside this mansion. The main living room has a large fireplace as well, and there's an attached dining area and custom eating kitchen with all the appliances you could ask for. We can also see P. Diddy's whole bar in the common area where his personal bartender is serving hmm. up none other than Syrah. Other lavish features of Diddy's custom mega mansion include a home movie theater with room for 35 guests, a fitness center, and a wine storage room. Not to mention, TMZ reported there's a separate spa pavilion with steam room, massage area, and full-service beauty salon because a man like Mr. Combs does not get his toenails clipped in a public salon. Oh, Plus, wow. These massive Villa de Luxury amenities just keep coming. There's a 3,000 square foot detached guest house in the property as well. I wonder what the fuck is in that guest house. Area and more. His acre of land you know, a lot of um, deviants, they, they, they keep a, a storage shed for all they fill. I wonder and how much of that filth is in that damn guest house. The mansion and run for its money. We know that the well-connected rapper also loves to throw epic parties just like the Playboy Mansion used to, such as his The Real White Party fundraiser. Maybe in the near future, Diddy will He did a lot of them white parties in um. In and Dubai and Bangkok too, where it's legal to have to sex with uh, young boys. You can get a boy in LA Dubai for eight. Um, he eight, you can get a boy um at eight years old. Actually available to rent. Guys, if you have two hundred and twenty-five k to spend for July until Labor Day. Money, 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 money. Yeah, he all about the money. Take that, take that. Mansion is waterfront living at its finest, and that looks about right. To even own a home in the Hamptons, you have to be posh. And of course, Diddy is both rich and famous, so he fits in with the crowd just Yeah, fine. he's this rich and famous. On one acre of waterfront land over when the, the fuck Gardner is the State government going to get involved? When is the government going to get involved? Every last one of them bitches that he flies there, knowing that he's going to do something. Every one of them young men that he flies there and know he's going to do something. It becomes sex trafficking. It becomes sex trafficking. The second they get on the plane, it's sex trafficking. That's a federal case. Will and Jada too. Every time they got Charlie Mack to bring a young boy to the Smith compound, it's sex trafficking. The other fireplace is I love Manchester too. Manchester United. First uh, football game I ever seen in my life. Got to see David Beckham play before he came to the United States when I was living in London. Y'all know I love you in England. I can't wait to come back to London. I miss it. I miss my Sarah. My Sarah Fontaine. I miss my Natalie. My girlfriends. My real friends. The pool house hmm. Cabana also has a full bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what, um... Looking at this Hamptons mansion, it's no doubt it served Diddy well for his famous white parties. And this is what... Almost all white and you know, this is what happens when you, when you start serving Not the today. world and you stop serving God. Somebody could go to all of them houses right now and burn them the hell up. And the only thing he'd be able to do is collect a check. Things don't matter. Things can be nice. Creature comforts can be nice, but they don't matter. Human beings matter. They talk about black lives matter and black women matters and black music matters. This nigga has been the most divisive nigga ever in the history of niggas. He is the most fucked off nigga in the whole kingdom of niggadom. And y'all worshipped him. Y'all worshipped him. He wanted y'all to worship him. He wanted y'all to, to believe that he was God here on earth. But he got a boss too, and his boss name is Clive Davis. Clive run him. Diddy don't run himself. But you know, that's how they do in L.A. That's why I never move there. I do business there. I will go there and do business. I will go there and get money if I need to. But I can't live there. It's godless. It's a godless place. The city is titled, it's named, Los Angeles. That means lost angels. Who wants to live in a place where the angels is lost? Because if the angels are lost, then that means they disconnected from home. And if they disconnected from home, then what the hell are they doing down here? Lost angels. Los Angeles. Lost angels. Angels. It's funny, Kim Porter was doing real fine in Calabasas raising their children until he moved out there, then all of a sudden she gone. Hmm. 
she was beautiful. She gave him beautiful children. And he disgraced her. With every young piece of ass he could get his house on. Do I foam at the mouth? No, I don't foam at the mouth. Well, at least I haven't in years. I used to. Oh, I used to get real mad. I used to get so mad that I would take these teeth and stick it into the neck of anybody who tried me. I don't do that no more. I don't need to. I just handle up. See, y'all trolls don't understand. Y- y'all, y'all ain't used to knowing people like me. People who keep their word. People who don't lie. I told y'all if y'all kept pay- playing on my page. I told you if you kept disrespecting me and the memory of my dead son. <clears throat> my living son. If y'all disrespect anything that I love. I'm coming even harder at your heroes. So Puffy and Mary and everybody else who's mad, be mad. Grand Rising as well. Be mad. And anybody who don't like what I'm saying, you know, feel free not to watch. <laughs> like you're sitting here calling yourself trying to disrespect me on my page. Those of y'all who don't understand, right? My bad. I'm gonna clear that. Bad don't like what real quick. Those of y'all who don't understand, man. She told about exposing y'all heroes. She told about exposing people in the industry. You know. The ones y'all look up to. The ones y'all didn't know that would be on this perverse, perverted, perverted shit that goes on in Hollywood. I spoke about it for the longest time. You know. People don't want to believe me, man, when I said the gay mafia. Now you got people who used to be in the industry that are washed up now, and they telling you exactly what it is, what they had to do to sell themselves to get their money. Maybe the music industry at her time wasn't getting that bad, but then it got it got worse later on. Um, this music shit. Mm. People sell their souls, man. Make a deal with the devil and do them deeds. <laughs> do I believe? Do y'all believe Diddy? Diddy is that capable of being evil to do that? I always thought that after Biggie died, this motherfucker like took off sky high. Some just wasn't right, man. Just I don't know. Maybe that's just me, but let's keep playing. Be mad. Grand Rising as well. Be mad. And anybody who don't like what I'm saying, you know, feel free not to watch. (laughs) Like you're sitting here calling yourself trying to disrespect me on my page. But you're on my page. Why are you on my page? If If I'm such a nobody, if I'm so crazy, if I'm so mentally insane, why do you keep watching me? Why wouldn't you block me? Total facts right there. That's total facts right there. That's total facts. If you don't like what I'm talking about and you don't want to see me, then don't follow me. Get the F off. Log off. I never understand people who troll and go on people's channels, man. I don't like you. Thumbs down, flag. I do. If you don't like somebody, just don't watch this shit. Move on. Don't even bother trying to fight or say anything. Because your views are going to be totally different from everybody who watches this person. And that person's views. So, you know. I'm just saying. But anyway, let's keep on playing. If you hate what I'm saying and doing so much, then you should want to have nothing to do with it. You shouldn't want to see me. You shouldn't, but you keep getting on my page. See, every every warning that I issued, it's issued for all you trolls as well. Y'all keep messing with me and mine, and I'm going to go even harder at your heroes. So um, at 8 a.m. Central, which is 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, which would be 6 a.m. in California, I am going live, and I am going to tell the story. Of how Christopher Williams tried to um, 
secure a deal from Sean Combs. Y'all want to know how Christopher Williams ended up being arrested for stealing um, headphones out of Coles? You should ask Puff. He's the one that made him desperate. So I'm going to tell all about it because I know. Because I'm a part of the story. See, Puff don't know. And, and, and Christopher don't know that I'm a part of their story. But I am, and I'm going to tell you how. Mm. 8 a.m. I'm going to finish praying. I'm going to burn some more sage. In all honesty, after I put that post up, I, I've been waiting for shooters to come to my house. <clears throat> I've been sitting here with my gun. I'm not this is a very dangerous situation this woman's putting herself in, man. We all got to pray for uh, Jaguar right, right? Because this, this is real, bro. I've been trying to tell people that these motherfuckers, if you, the moment you try to expose these celebrities, they will have hitchmen come after you and they will take you out. Have somebody in the streets, they'll pay somebody to take you out. Why you think a lot of these celebrities, these rap artists end up dying? These rap artists end up dying. Rap artists end up dying. Right off the bat. Just coming up. <laughs> hey. Somebody didn't keep their mouth shut. I'm telling you, that's, that's just how it is. It's a cruel world we live in, man. But. <laughs> Let's pray for her, man. Because they, 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 man. They came after Nick Cannon when he explored that, when he said what he had to say on Professor X. See what it is? A lot of black folks are starting to wake up, man. They starting to see. And some celebrities are starting to see the agenda of what's going on in Hollywood. But it's too late. You serving your master. You did that oath. So you guys, you got to pray to God and hope you can get out. Like a person like Jaguar, right? She was able to get out the industry a long time ago because, you know. But the, the moment she's starting to get even bigger than what it is right now, chances are she might, you know, her safety might be in jeopardy. I don't know. But anyways, man, let's keep on playing. Won't show it to y'all, but I've been sitting here with my gun waiting for shooters to come to my house. Because niggas do kill. When people start talking like I talk, they do. Big was getting ready to leave Bad Boy, start his own shit. He had a band that they was putting together, him and Jay-Z, uh, with uh, Foxy Brown and, and Tiffany. Charlie Baltimore called the commission. That shit ended real fast, didn't it? That shit ended. Puff wanted Biggie as his, as his bottom feeding hoe. That's what Puff treated Biggie like. Get my money. It's pimping these niggas like hoes, man. <laughs> we know we know a nigga back in them days that looked like Diddy. Especially them Harlem niggas. Them, them Harlem dudes love to, you know, spread their wings like peacocks and shit. Make sure everybody knows they wear different colors of everything. Boy, I tell you, let's keep playing. Got real fast. Puff, Puff be moving niggas around, you know. But he got that catalog. He got that catalog and he's been making money off of it. And he bought that, that big old mansion down the street from Rape Central Playboy Mansion. Like I said, they live in Los Angeles. Lost Angels. You know. Not everybody in L.A. is bad. There's great people in L.A. They're just not the ones that run it. <laughs> they don't run L.A. The good people don't run L.A. They live there. And they pay through the nose to live with trash, to live with demons, to live with imps. I, I won't invest my money that way. I won't. Just mm, won't happen. I've never stayed in L.A. for more than three months. I can't stomach it. Because of all of the back dealing and, and just watching girls prostitute themselves. I'm um, hoping to marry a plastic surgeon or a rapper. One of the reasons why I couldn't go to L.A., man. 
I've heard so many crazy stories on LA, man. Like it's just it's, <laughs> it's like third world pimped out whore country, man. Some pussy all over the place, man. I get it. Some people will love it. <laughs> oh man, shit, crazy, man. I couldn't I couldn't live in an environment like that, man. I heard people are homeless as crazy out there. But I don't know. Well I guess it's time for everybody to know who you are. Sean P. Diddy Honey Cone. I'ma tell them all about you, bitch at 8 a.m. I'ma confess your sins for you since you won't do it. And Christopher Williams, if you feel some kind of way about it, I don't know. Maybe you should go back to Coles and steal something. Make you feel better. But um, just make sure they don't catch you on camera this time. Maybe you was high. Maybe you slipped up. I don't know. But I don't give no fuck. You came all the way down here to Dallas. Well, you were supposed to come down here to Dallas, but you never made it, Christopher. Because, see, I helped negotiate the terms for your appearance at Allure Cigar and Jazz a few years back. And when you got the deposit, Christopher, you didn't bother to tell nobody you was booked with Teddy Riley in Vegas. Same day, same time. And you never gave uh, Kevin from Allure his money back either. That I know. You never refunded him. You just stole the fucking deposit. So why don't you worry about dealing with that and don't worry about what I'm about to tell the world about you and Puff. Because you know what? You're real talented. You should have thought more of yourself before you decided to get on your knees and beg the demon for some bread. And all he gave you was crumbs. That's all he ever really gives anybody. Whatever millions Puff has put into somebody's pocket, he's making triple that. And you just saw that. I showed it to you. So yeah, um, 8 a.m. <clears throat> I have no chill. Oh, you see how the industry is? If you ain't white, you ain't Jewish. You ain't white, you ain't Jewish. You ain't planted no seeds the right way. You done. Ain't nobody trying to talk to you, man. You might be a millionaire. But these people are actually multi-billionaires. And they next to the millionaire. They look down on them. You guys are cheap compared to me. You know what I'm saying? I'm a zillionaire, a billionaire, I should say. You know, I don't know, but that's how people are. They 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 base celebrities based on the racket. Like, if you're in the hills, you know, you driving like a BMW. That's like cheap compared to these motherfuckers. These motherfuckers like, man, I'm driving a McLaren. <laughs> I'm driving a two door suicide door, two thousand dollar blah blah Lamborghini and shit. You know. But anyway, let's keep on playing. I'm talking about Christopher Williams and Puff Daddy. I'm going to be telling the story um, at 8 a.m. But right now, I'm going to get ready to get off, and I'm going to pray. And uh, all you sodomites. And I'm not saying anything about gay people. I'm not talking about gay people. When I say sodomite, I ain't talking about gay people. Sodomy. You can still be charged with sodomy. Sodomy is a crime. Sodomy is when you start taking people's ass. And they really ain't for it. You can sodomize a man. You can sodomize a woman. But we're going to talk about the sodomites this morning at 8 a.m. And if anybody really got a problem with me, I want y'all to just go to the Bible. And read about Jesus Christ a little bit this morning before you get on my live. Because see, he came to the synagogue. And when he got to the synagogue and he saw what they was doing and the kind of foolishness and, 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 and messed upness they had going on. They were selling, they, they were selling birds, they were selling this, selling that so people could make prayer. Jesus went crazy. Jesus turned up, flipped tables and everything and said, not in my father's name. You ain't going to sit here and hustle people. God's word ain't no hustle. Jesus said it first. God's word ain't no hustle. You hustling these people. And he went crazy and he turned up. And guess what? He walked out and ain't nobody put no handcuffs on to me because they knew they was all wrong as hell. I ain't doing nothing different. Yup, I'm confessing on the Sabbath. 
I'm going to confess their sins. I'm going to tell the truth on the Sabbath. That's how I'm going to start my Sabbath morning. I'm going to tell the truth about this nigga who all y'all worshipped, who all y'all believed, who all y'all thought, oh, P. Diddy, P. Diddy. <laughs> and y'all should probably also know about how he and Suge, Suge Knight worked together to create the whole East Coast, West Coast conflict to make y'all buy records. And to make y'all choose sides. They did that on purpose. They was cool. They did business together. Puff always sent Devante, KC, JoJo, and Mary out to L.A. All the time. They worked at death row just as much as they worked um, in New York. Before Daddy's house was even really Daddy's house. That's why KC and JoJo had all them songs with Tupac. How do you want it? That wasn't no accident. Uh, 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 Tupac didn't call them up. They was already there. They was there partying, getting high. Puff and Shug had an arrangement, and they created that entire media campaign just to get y'all to buy records. I ain't got no love for Shug, and I ain't got no love for Puff. The only thing I'm, I'm mad about, see, I was there tonight. In the Shore Club, eating dinner at Nobu the night that they shot Suge Knight in the ass. And I watched everybody be so happy. They were so happy. I was arguing with Paris Hilton in the bathroom about what a horse she was. And then we heard the shots go off. It was right there on Miami Beach. MTV, uh, it was MTV Music Awards time. I had a show. Um, a yacht party. Private show that I was doing. And, um... Yeah, I was there. I heard the shots when she, and, when, and, and I saw them roll Suge right by me. He was laying on his stomach and he was bleeding out his ass. And they was all happy. Everyone was so happy. Why ain't nobody shot you in the ass yet, Puff? Maybe it's time for you to get shot in the ass. I guarantee you, people won't laugh. Just like they did when Suge got shot. Your old friend. Your old friend, Suge Knight. Y'all niggas is corny. You've been living on lies, and I'm burning it all down. You're the biggest obstacle, Puff, because you hold the most secrets. You tell the most lies. Fuck, I need to worry about Mary J. Blige for you run that bitch. All I got to do is move you around. And I am going to move you around this morning. And if I don't go on live at 8 a.m., no, it's probably because I'm giving a, a report to the police because somebody came to my house and I was forced to kill them. I got my gun right here. You send somebody to my motherfucking house to see what the fuck happens. Don't make a killer out of me. But I am going to tell the truth about you. I will stand my ground. I will defend my life, my family, and my property. That I'll do. I'm waiting. I'll see y'all at 8.